There are special people in this world. We don't ask to be special. We're just born this way. <gasps> you said the future's always changing, right? What are you gonna go do? I'm gonna try and make a better one. The story we're telling is about a bunch of rogue psychics trying to keep away from a government division. And I'm not a conspiratorial theorist, that's not my thing, but what if it does exist? When I got the script, the first thing I did is I went on the internet and I, I typed in, everyone should do this, psychic powers experiments. I hit the return button. Up comes this amazing stuff after the Second World War and the Cold War is about to begin and people haven't really understood or, or experimented on, on what the brain power can do. How can we not only use it to our own gains, but how can we actually twist it and make it make it more powerful? My name is Dr. John Alexander and I'm now retired both from the military and from Los Alamos National Laboratory. I think that people have had powers ever since there's been people and this was key to survival. We have through Western education taught people a lot of things that cannot be. That said, uh, other cultures have not had those impediments put in place, and so their belief systems are far more accepting. In fact, if you look at many of the Aboriginal people or indigenous tribes around the world, they still seem to have capabilities, for instance, to find water, to find game, anything like that. We have become such skeptics, and I think heavily influenced by people who are not skeptics, uh, but are debunkers who start from the premise, it can't be, therefore it isn't, and I don't know how you did it, but I know you tricked me somehow. During the Cold War, we were aware that the Soviets were actively exploring a wide range of uh, psychic phenomena. Hence, we began similar explorations, but you must understand that this was not universally accepted. And there was another premise, and that was, yes, you can do this, but that's the work of the devil. We always fear things we don't understand. And one of the key issues I've had in various scientific uh, panels and meetings and whatnot is what I call the catch-22. We say, here are very unusual events that absolutely occur. And they say, well, what's your theoretical basis for that? And you say, well, I don't understand it, uh, but it happens. And science in general will discount it, uh, even if it happened and even if it happened in front of them, which has occurred on numerous occasions. When I was working with the intelligence community in the Army, we were very serious about exploring a wide range of psychic phenomena. What we have seen is people have a broad range of power, psychokinesis, remote viewing, uh, things of that nature, for instance. We talk about the visual spectrum, what you can see. What we do know is there are people who can see above and beyond. You can see a little bit into the infrared or into the ultraviolet. It's like every other physical condition. Everybody is not the same. And so you will find people who can see things that other folks don't. Well, to me, it wasn't about supernatural powers. It wasn't like people flying through the air, like having spider webs coming out of them. It's actually very simple powers. You have people that can move things. So it's a telekinetic thing. What we have seen, things are deformed, bent. Uh, I've seen strange things fly. And there are certainly people who can injure others. Nikolai Kokolov, a KGB defector, he talked about breaking necks remotely. Uh, that, that's pretty severe damage. You have watchers, they can see into the future. Stupid child, I already saw how you died. And you know it's not here and it's not today. You would probably call this psychic spying. The ability to see places where you cannot have access to with satellites or didn't have spies. Classic example, the Iranian hostage situation. Could not get access to the information of what was happening in Tehran. And yet some of our people in the unit were able to accurately provide information about the status of people that predicted when one person was going to be released. And sure enough, it happened. 
Joe McMonagall, who was remote viewer 001, was given a site in northern Russia, and he described a number of submarines, one of them huge, a lot of unique detail. The missile tubes were in front of the conning tower in the back, double hulled. That had never been seen before. Conventional wisdom by our boat builders was not real. Sure enough, a short time later, cameras came on, and here's the Typhoon-class submarine drug smuggling. They were able to predict where drug shipments were going to be or where specific people were going to be. They have demonstrated uh, quite effectively what we call precognitive. You believe this is how we found you? Sniffers, if you had brushed your teeth 20 years ago, the toothbrush, they can sniff you out and they can find you. People use what we call psychometry and that's the ability to hold things and from that get imprints. Where has it been? Who's owned it? What was it involved in? These things do happen. Whatever this key unlocks is being shadowed. I think I've never seen before. Pushers can push a memory onto you. Get the hell out of my head! Certainly there are ways to do that. I can implant thoughts so that what you see is not what's actually there. That is well documented in hypnosis, where you can working with an individual, and now it's somewhat difficult to make them not see things, uh, but having people see things that aren't there. In a hypnotic state, that's a piece of cake. Hey! We're on the same side, remember? There are things that can now be done with electromagnetics to implant thoughts as well. So that's a very physical sort of thing. Go, go, go! Yeah! You have bleeders. Bleeders are able to emit a high-pitched noise, which, as their description is, will, you will bleed through your ears and you'll, you'll, you'll be killed. We have devices that can do that, certainly because the use of sound is well known. And in fact, we now in the non-lethal weapons, this is one of the areas where we have LRAD, the long-range acoustic device that can keep people at bay. We, we know a lot about sound, and sound can be raised to levels that, you know, basically as vibrating organs can, it's called uh, bleeding. Your stitch, that should be obvious to a watcher. <laughs> Stitches are interesting. Stitches can stitch up what has happened with the bleeders. So basically, if the bleeder's trying to kill you, the stitch can come and, as, as the word says, it'll stitch you up, they'll, they'll make you okay. I've seen amazing healing uh, capabilities. Does it work all the time? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. Or we would have seen a dramatic change in the way we do medicine. But the studies on prayer, uh, for instance, uh, as well as hands-on healing has been well demonstrated in the laboratory. But cuts, illnesses, uh, fevers, things of this nature. And again, demonstrated in the laboratory and often using unicellular life, meaning the cells don't have any external concept of healing or not healing and that. And yet you see dramatic changes and particularly in the rate uh, of healing. All of these technologies, by the way, are neutral. The issue is not the technology, it's how do you apply them. I don't see why you keep at it. You already know the ending to this story. We're going to change it. Yes, they've extrapolated, and as my movie star friend at the time, I say, John, it's just a movie. Damn. But there is a premise that can support the capabilities. We genuinely feel that we have given people something that is really multi-layered, interesting, and thought-provoking, because you think that this could actually be true.